what is a bullet journal, first of all? I don't know, some of you might already use one, you might be interested in it. Basically, it's just a way to completely customize your own journal and planning system yourself. And if any of you have like gone down the rabbit hole of seeing what it's like on Google when you look up bullet journals, it's like absolutely insane. There are like amazing ones that are calligraphy and watercolors and all of that. And I just wanna show that it's not all that. It can be that, but they can be really, really simple too. So all you need for a bullet journal are two things, a journal and a pen. Now, of course, there are people that really enjoy certain journals and really enjoy certain pens, and I'm gonna go over all of that stuff with you because I do think there are some that are better than others. But essentially, that's all you need. It's not some like crazy system. It's not something that you need to spend a lot of money on, but it's really incredible for those of you that find that you have a planner, a journal, maybe you have 39 sticky notes all over your house, maybe you write a grocery list on a receipt in the bottom of your purse. Are you feeling me? Like that's how I am. I just have scribbles everywhere and I lose stuff and I can't keep track of things and I really wanted something that I could just have in one book, not only like my planning of my day, but ideas, blog post ideas, books I wanna read, it's pretty cool because you can keep it all in this. So, where should I start? I'm gonna start with the supplies. I think that'd be the easiest way to go over it. So, like I said, all you need is a journal, but the one that I use, that I've done a lot of research on, of course, that I like the best, is the Leuchtturm 1917 A5. It's right here. It's this leather bound journal it has dotted pages, which is really important. You can use line pages. You don't have to have dotted pages, but if you want to create boxes and square off templates on your page, it's much easier to use those dots with a ruler to create that kind of template. So the other reasons that I think the Leuchtturm is the best is that number one, it has an index at the front. And if you think about it, if you're using a bullet journal and you're putting everything you have in there, over some time, the course of you know two to three months, you're going to have a lot of information in the journal and it's gonna be impossible for you to just quickly reference something. For instance, I have a page called books that I want to read. Well, you know, four or five months from now when I'm about half into this book, it's kind of hard to find that. So there's an index at the first, which I'll try to show you. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this through this, but so there's this index in the front so I can put books that I want to read on page eight, which leads to the next great thing about the Leuchtturm, they're numbered pages. So I, th you should do this, Amy. So if you are really into this, I think that you've got to have an index and you've got to have number pages. Otherwise you're just going to be fumbling around. It's going to be a really huge pain in the ass. So I like the Leuchtturm. Um, other things about the Leuchtturm, they have two of the little, um, whatever you call those things, the little ribbons. So you can have two different parts of the journal tabbed at the same time. The paperweight is really nice because if you are very artsy and you want to create designs and things and use different colors, you don't really wanna have any bleed through or ghosting on the other side of the page. So it's really important that the page weight is thick enough because I use both sides of my pages. So you don't wanna have paper that's so thin that you can't read what's going on on one side of the page. Does it lay flat while you're writing in it? Yes, it lays flat. So it's really easy to write in. I find that um, there's not a lot of smudging. Like I said, there's no ghosting. There's no bleed through on the pages. It's a really good book. So. Um, and oh, by the way, I'm gonna link to all of these things I'm talking about in the comments. I'm also going to make a blog post that will always live on my blog so you can always go back and reference it because there's a lot of things I'm gonna be talking about, obviously, but I really do like this. Moleskin makes a book as well. Um, I haven't used it myself, but there is actually a YouTube tutorial that goes really deep into this, looking at the Leuchtturm versus the Moleskin. Um, and that's actually what I watched and helped me make my decision. So anyway, I use the Leuchtstrom, but there are probably other great ones out there too. I'll link, there's a um, website called goulaypens.com 
and I'll put that in the comments as well. It's like a mom and pop. It's a it's a husband wife team. It's a really lovely little online shop. They ship really quickly. I think when I ordered mine, I got it in two days. So I'm a fan. Okay, so we've talked about the journal itself. The pens I use, once again, it's totally up to you. I found these through, once again, research from some of these people. I use these um, Faber, Faber, Faber Castell, I think is, I don't know, I'm probably botching this, but Faber Castell pens. They're the Pit Artist pens and they come, I bought these on Amazon. They come with four different weights. Super fine, fine, bold, and medium. I use the super fine and the fine. Those both don't bleed. They don't really go through the page. I just think they don't smudge. I'm just, I'm weird. I'm weird about the smudging people. Like I don't want it to smudge. I'm kind of like a perfectionist in that way. So those are really good pens. If you're looking for colored pens, there are the Stadler, Statler, whatever, um, Tripless Fine Liner pens. Can you see that? I don't know. It's gonna be in the comments, like I said. So this comes in a pack of 10 on Amazon, all different colors. So if you're all artsy fartsy and you wanna create cute little things, you have all of those colors. So I have those, although I will tell you that I don't really use colors. I thought I would, but like I said earlier, I try to keep it really simple. So I'm really just using the black pens. So journals, pens, need a ruler, super fine pens for the win. Oh uh, yeah, right. So um, gotta have a ruler. So when you're kind of like blocking out your pages, um, I also have those little um, white out strip tape things because like I said, sometimes I'm like, I don't like the way that looks. I'm getting better, you guys. I'm getting better about it, I promise. But I have some of those as well. Like I just went into staples and kind of went crazy on it. So, okay, so I showed you the journal. It's completely customizable. Yes, you can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. It's totally up to you. And one thing I wanna say, I was having coffee with a friend last week and she said that she started a bullet journal um, in the summer. And she's like, yeah, I just quit because I, I figured out that I was spending way more time planning than I was doing. And I totally get that and I think that that is feasible. That could happen, but I certainly don't. I don't, um, there's, there's a little bit of time right when you get it, when you're kind of setting up your system that yeah, it's gonna take a couple hours, but it's so worth it. And as the month goes on and as your weeks go on, it becomes really, really easy. So um, time-wise, at the end of a month, I will create my new um, templates, which will probably take me like not more than an hour, really. And then at the, first of every week, I create one weekly and daily page. So it's not time consuming at all. Like I said, it can be if you want it to be, because some people love to plan and that's fantastic. Like I'm a planner too. It's really, really fun, but it doesn't have to take that much time. Okay. So we've talked about who, who is it really good for? Neurotic people, overthinkers, type A planners, people that have lots of ideas. I love this journal because I think about something I want to post for Green Beauty or a blog post or this book passage I read and I put it all in this journal. It's all together and it's so fantastic that I don't have to be scrambling trying to find that post-it note that's behind my bedside table that, you know, down there all dusty. It's, it's so, so good. Um, it's good to have pen to paper. I really think that's important now that we're spending so much time on our screens and that really just takes it into why I personally did it. I spend a lot of time on screens, obviously with my job, social media, um, all of my planning I was doing was on, you know, Google calendar. And I was like, dude, I got to get off the screens. So this to me is a time to look through this book, spend time thinking about what I want to achieve, what I want my day to look like. And I'm not looking at a screen. I swear when I started this, I felt like I didn't even know how to write anymore. Like my hand, I'm like, this is, I don't even know how to do this because I spend so much time texting and on my screen. So it's just a good way to like ground yourself, get into the book and get off the screens. Okay, so let's show my bullet journal. There are so many different templates online, different ways of doing it. I kind of follow the minimalistic bullet journal way in that it's just not too much. I don't feel really overwhelmed with it. But what's most important to me, 
Uh, I'm a tracker of sorts, and I find that when I track my behaviors, I usually do better. So I have this October tracker right here. And I'll take pictures of these maybe and put them on my blog. But this is like my, this is a really important page for me in that I put down um, things I'm doing for my health, uh, behavior, things I'm trying to do to improve myself and kind of tracking. So for me, it's like I have cardio, yoga, hydrating, reading 30 minutes, getting fresh air, vitamins, gratitude, anything you want to kind of keep a look on. It can also be things that you're trying to cut out. Like I have no alcohol and I put a dot in every day that I don't have alcohol or caffeine or whatever. Um, and then I just kind of put dots on the page. So hopefully, you know, by the end of the month, this is filled with dots. And I, I, I want it to be where I look back at the end of the month and say, I can objectively look at this and see, you know, where I was, you know, not doing so great, where I did great, how that made me feel, things like that. So that's kind of my own thing. I don't know if that would be interesting to you, but I'll put photos of these down so you can see. So I also, my next page is I have a gratitude log. So every night before I go to bed, I have these pages numbered with the dates and I write down something I am grateful for, which is just huge for me because I can obviously get into my head about all this craziness in the world and it's just a good way to ground myself before I go to bed um, with the gratitude log. So I have that. I have what they call collections and collections are things like I showed you earlier, books that I wanna read, blog post ideas, um, green beauty projects I want to work on. Those are personal to me, but just kind of a grouping of things that you find yourself, if you're like driving around, you think, oh my God, I've got to read that book. And then by the time you get home, you're like, I have no idea what book that was. Those are the what collections are for. They're fantastic because you put it down and you have it there forever. So I have a lot of these collections. Um, the books I want to read, things I'm waiting on. Um, that's a great one. You know, an email you sent out that you haven't gotten a return, something that's coming to you in a package, write it down right when it starts. You can keep track of things that are coming your way. Um, I have blog post ideas, green beauty product, uh, products. And this is where you can see where, um, these are like some recaps I'm doing for myself, but you, when you need a ruler, you know, obviously a ruler is really important and that's what makes the dotted pages so fantastic because you can create these grids, if you will. So I also have a master list, which is just essentially things that pop into my head that don't need to be done necessarily right now, but I need to be done at some point. Um, I'm just thinking of like these are meetings with people, like I need to find a good acupuncturist, something like that. I just write it down and I have it there. Um, I have an ongoing shopping list, Target, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, where I can put down things. And this has been huge for me. And actually kind of an issue because I didn't want to put lists in here because, okay, I am kind of a perfectionist and I thought I don't want to have all of these lists in this book that I've crossed off, but no, you need to put them in there. It's fantastic because one, you have them all together and it feels good to check things off, doesn't it, ladies and gents, doesn't it? It feels good to check things off. So I have that in there. So when I realize that I'm out, I'm out of laundry detergent, I just put it down right then. So when I go five days later, a week later, I have that there. This is all in the same book, which is amazing. I cannot tell you, I do not use post-it notes at all. I do not use old receipts to write things on anymore. It is all in here. Um, so, okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get down to like the pages that I use the most, which is my, my weekly and daily. So this is what my weekly and daily looks like. And it, is, you know, it's customizable to me. So yours doesn't have to look like this at all. But essentially, I put the week date right up here, and then I have this grid that I've created for myself of the days of the week, where I just put in, you know, quick hits, swim meet, yoga, things like that. Oh my God, I'm Tracy, this would be amazing for you. I'm telling you, it's like all consolidated into one thing. So next, oh, so I have this weekly, and then I have my to-dos, which I'm still kind of playing around with this, but I have it broken up into just like general to-dos, home, and work. So um, you can see that right there. This is from last week. 
And so over here, I've set up this grid to have my dailies, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is like where I spend my most time. This is when I start to look over here at my to-dos that I need to do and I'm placing them on which day of the week I want to. Now, um, I will put this in the comments, bulletjournal.com. That's the dude that started this whole thing. And if you go there, you will see, this is easy. So he set up this kind of set of symbols that you can use, a dot, an X, a forward. I don't follow his system exactly. I just basically use a dot next to it. Let me show you. So like, I don't, can you see those? I can't tell, it's so bright. But so you have a dot saying that means to be done. When it's done, you make a little X next to it. If it's not done on the day you're supposed to do it, you put turn it into a little forward arrow. That's what I do. So when I look down on Monday, on Tuesday morning, I look back to Monday and I see, okay, I did not call and order Apple Care. I did not write day of the thank you note I was supposed to. And then I move those down. So you're like constantly moving your to-do list around. Now that's once again, how it works for me, it might be different for you. I also set up a little um, box over here for my, the dinners that I'm cooking. So I can just really quickly look it over and say, okay, I'm doing this, 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 and this on the days of the week. So that's basically what my daily and my weekly looks like. This is this week, for instance. You can see, to-dos, homes, 1,000 work to-dos. Awesomeness. So, and then I always leave this little one down here below my dinners for just random things. Right now, I am trying to get all of my Halloween costume stuff together. So right now, it's a Halloween list of the things that I have to um, do for Halloween. So, as you can see, I mean, it's not, it's not really complicated at all. It can, you can make it whatever you want it to be. But I have found as a person that's used several paper, plan paper planners, um, online planners, this is it for me, for all the reasons I stated, that it gets me off my screen, that it's pen to paper, that it holds everything in one place. Um, oh, also, I don't do my future planning, my specific future planning on my bullet journal. What that means is I still use Google Calendar on my phone for appointments. I have a dentist appointment next week. That stuff is all still. So I don't, I don't make, um, that is a really good question. And obviously, okay, so we're asked, um, are you going to transfer all your long-term lists to your next journal when this one is filled? Um, that's a good question. I don't know yet because I'm not there, but yeah, that'd be one thing that I don't know. I don't know. And I know that um, these actually, the Wickstrom's come with these um, labels you can put on them and you can label like what year and everything it is but that's an excellent question I'll have to let you know once I get to that point which won't be a while with this journal but um, back to my Google Calendar so I, I don't do future planning I do all of the just specific times and dates still on my phone I don't make a monthly grid of my month here because that to me, I'm just, I'm really stuck on my phone. And it's just easy when you're at the dentist and you want to make the next appointment on my phone. And so I do, I do this bullet journaling for daily planning, weekly planning, and really just lists, ideas, things that are important to me. Um, just all of that stuff that's going in my brain, I'm putting into this. So like I said, my friend said, you can spend too much time planning. Yeah, you, you can, but I don't think you have to. I think once you get this down, for me, it's so easy. On Sunday night, I go in, I take my ruler, I create this little grid, I put my to-do homework, I transfer stuff that has not been used on my day before over to the new week, and it's done. So it's, um, it's, it's really not that complicated. Uh, as collections come into my mind, as things that I think, oh, I'd like to keep a grouping of this, I just add it in. And you don't need to have any sort of order of the pages. That's what that index is for that I was telling you guys about at the first. Once you have the index and you can write down what pages have what on it, then you won't be fumbling through. So, for instance, I have you know, this week, and then the next page isn't gonna be the following week. The next page is all the notes I wrote down that I wanted to talk about for um, 
this video? Do you index everything? Um, I haven't yet because I've only been doing this for a month and I, I'm only working with this much right now. So it's easy for me to kind of work my way through. And like I said, the Wigstrom has two ribbon holders so I can keep those in two pages. So I do index my collections though because I know those are going to become, I, collections are going to be big for me. Just groupings of thoughts and quotes and inspiration and all of that stuff. So I think that's it guys. Is that it? Um, okay, I'll tell you, please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Um, YouTube, let me look it up. I'm gonna tell you a couple of websites that I think are really cool to check things out. The first one I said was the um, bulletjournal.com, which is the guy who started it. And you will see how simple it is. Super simple. He really breaks down that coding system that I told you about that I'm not really using a lot. I'm only using a couple of the little symbols, but he has a video on here that explains it. There is tiny ray of sunshine. Just Google tiny ray of sunshine. And she's like a huge bullet journal enthusiast, but she talks about minimalist, um, minimalist books, which I like because like I said, you can go on and just see some amazing stuff. How many pages does your book have? 249. So, um, those target and grocery lists, sorry if you were already, oh, well that's the beauty of the index. So I just, I have a page right now where I have like my Trader Joe's, Target, Whole Foods, and I just write things down here. And then when this page is filled up, I'll just create a new one. And then in my index at the front, I'll say, I haven't done this yet because I don't have a second one, but I'll say grocery list. And then you put the number, all the numbers that they're on. So when you think, okay, I've got to put something on my Trader Joe's list, but you're already on like your third one that you've done, you'll know which page it's on. Oh, that's on page 93. You turn right to it. So yes, I keep the list in this book. When the page gets filled, I just start a new one on the next page in my book that's empty. So there's no need to um, keep, try to keep it organized to sections. Like you just keep going. The next page is whatever you want. And that's what the index does so beautifully and the number pages. Will you be doing a blog post on this? Yes. I'm actually gonna post this video on the blog and then I'll have the links to everything I talked about underneath. So, whoa, I just like turned into a ghost. Um, any other questions? It's really, I think you guys would really, really enjoy it. I am enjoying, I, I love pulling it out. I love sitting down with it, um, with a cup of tea in the morning and going over my list and figuring out what, you know, is in store for me for the day. And it's super awesome. So after your trip, you just cross that list off and start a new one. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, oh my gosh, Jennifer. Just Google bill tracking bullet journal. I saw this. There was a really cool tracker on incoming and outgoing expenditures. So there's there's something online there. I actually, I'll try to look that up for you. Um, Boho Berry, thank you, yes. She is uh, amazing. She has a great blog and she has a great YouTube channel. In fact, at the first when I mentioned the, um, the uh, comparison between the Moleskin and the Loikstrom, she's the one that did that video that I watched. I mean, she is in depth. She has everything you wanna know. So Tiny Rays of, Tiny Ray of Sunshine, Boho Berry, um, just the bullet journal guy. And the bullet, oh, they're, oh, oh I, was, I was just looking for my phone. <laughs> okay, that's filming, okay. Um, great Instagram accounts, Tiny Ray of Sunshine, the bullet journal, there is one that I'll, I'll put in my um, blog post that I love because she's super minimalist and I just love her spread. So you, there's always inspiration to change things up. Mine, this might be, my daily and weekly might be completely different next month. So it, that's the beauty of the system is that it changes with you. You make it whatever you want it to be. So with that, I think... That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope this was, I hope I covered it. I think I covered most of it, but um, like I said, I'll have a blog post on this. I'll post this video on the blog post and um, you guys have an awesome day, okay? I'll talk to you guys soon.